this time on The Gadget Show. <laughs> Susie and I stun the world with our gadgety magical powers. Oh, where's it gone? We face the challenge of putting on a dazzling magic show. There you have it. And using cutting edge technology to trick our audiences into thinking that we're proper magicians. And I'm beginning to think it wasn't a very good idea. Also tonight, he's no illusion. John Bentley is testing home cinema kit with Radio 1 movie expert James King. Overall, I'm quite yes. impressed. And Otis travels to Barcelona to meet one of the world's most advanced humanoid robots. You have got to see the technological marvel that is Green B. Welcome to the Gadget Show. Welcome to The Gadget Show. Right, no messing around. We're going to get straight into this week's challenge, which I have to say is magic. Yeah, and we're talking proper white gloved, watch my hand, nothing up my sleeve type magic. Yeah, although I suspect there probably is something up your sleeve. Uh, we're going to be real sparkly suited, mystically powered magicians, a little bit like I kind of gadged up Paul Daniels and Debbie McGee, but without the obvious age gap. <gasps> Don't be rude. I wasn't being rude. Not a lot. Not a lot. Oh. <laughs> That's Tommy Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> We've been told to wait outside Gadget HQ to receive our challenge. Who are we waiting for? I have no... I have no idea. Hang on a minute. Mm. Hang on, I recognise that man. That's Paul Zenon. Yeah, He's a magician. magician. He's brilliant. Oi, oi. Hi, Paul. Hello. How are you doing? You Great right? to meet you, man. You too. You well? Are you here yeah. first? I am indeed. I've Excellent. got a little... Something magical for oh, you. Oh, we are going to pack magic. a card, right? Yeah. I'm going to get to choose a card in a second, but if I did that, I might be able to influence you in some simple I'm going to go for that one. Which one? You see, you're too easy. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll tell you what, I'll flick through like that. Just tell me when to stop. stop. There? Cool. All right. Take that card. Don't Got look it. at it yet. No. OK. Not looking. The rest, pretty straightforward. Right. But have a look at that one. Whoa! Oh, the chair! Jason and Susie, your challenge is to see if gadgets can help you become magicians. You'll both need to perform the best trick you can using tech to help to be judged by the magic bloke in front of you. That'll be you. Good luck. We're going to need it. We you are, are going to yeah, need it. Oh, proper, you. proper magic trick, all right? And it's Thank got to involve you. gadgets. Gadgets is the main thing. Yes. And the best of luck. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Paul. Thank you, mysterious <gasps> man. Hey, this is going to be so tough. What's magicians! Oh. Watch this. No. We clearly needed help. And where better to begin our quest to become magicians than a magic shop? Checking out some off-the-shelf gadgety tricks designed for apprentices like us. <laughs> After searching in-store and online, we had each found a few tricks to get ready for a gadget magic smackdown to try out on each other and out on the street. Right, Susie, so ready for some magic tricks? I am. All right, check this one out. It's a little trick I call... handkerchief trick. <laughs> A little red handkerchief. Okay. Pop it in there, I'm going to make it disappear. And it goes. First of all, I'm going to pop in my little kerchief. Like that, and then I'm going to go... <gasps> oh, where's it gone? Gone. Look, I'll show you where it's gone. Whoa, check it! Show me how it's done slowly. Okay. Yeah. What? Okay. Oh! Did you get it? <laughs> yep, the fake thumb tip is a great starter trick. Though, if we told you exactly how it's done, that wouldn't be magic, would it? All right. And the change bag's gadgety secret can be used for a whole variety of tricks. But we didn't stop What's at that? handkerchiefs. Oh, no. All right, so 50p. Yeah. We'll just place it on my hand there. OK, so just, just in the middle there. And then... Look at that. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. Wah! Wah! Hala! Yeah, that's very clever. <laughs> Go on then. Paper bag. Okay. Yeah. Coat bottle. In the paper bag. All right, got it? Yes. All right. Normal bottle of beer, look. See it? I'm going to pass that top through the glass. What do you reckon? <laughs> Woo -hoo -hoo! Check it, try it. Amazing. And how did I do it? Well, I summoned the mystical forces of physical attraction with a little help from this magnetic ring. My final trick I'd got from the App Store. It would enable me to guess what coin someone was holding using just my iPhone, as if by magic. Have you got any change? Just take a coin in your hand. Don't tell me what it is yet. Don't show me it. I'm going to write on what I think you've got on here, OK? It's a doodle pad, right? OK, I think I've got it. 
You just place the phone down there. Tell me what coin you've got. 20p. 20p, right? Yeah. OK. Right. Here we go. What does it say? Oh, that's a surprise. It's 20p. Yeah. How about that? How did you do that? We'd both done OK with our tricks, but performing them as non-magicians was tough. Oh. I'd realised that off-the-shelf magic could only take us so far in our challenge. It's all very well having these off-the-shelf tricks. I know. But unless you've got really good sleight of hand and loads of time to practice... Yeah, you really need to put in the practice. Susie, this is a tough challenge. What I think we need to do is go back to something that we both know yeah, a lot yeah. about. Technology and gadgets. I'm, Consumer gadgets. I'm right with you. Let's make a pact in front of Jeremy here. Yeah. Let's say, no more off-the-shelf gadgets. No, no more off-the-shelf off the magic, magic. Only gadgets. Digits. OK? Okay. Yeah? Come here. How about our tricks? Good start. Yeah. Yeah. Just, what? Put these dice in here, I'll make them disappear. Hey, okay. this is what? Me, what? What? Abracadabra, where are they? Yeah. Hey! Oh, Abracadabra! Oh, oh, oh. Look, 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 you dice, you dice! Hey! Hey, Mark! Hey! Whoa! Whoa! Hey! It's me! Come on! Alright! Oh! <laughs> OK, guys, look, enough, enough. Please, please, I'm impressed. <laughs> That's right. nothing. That's nothing. Later right. on in the show, we're going to be trying to impress mm -hmm. professional magicians mm -hmm. with our cutting-edge tech. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in, fact, <laughs> in fact, don't go anywhere, because the climax of this week's magic challenge is absolutely spectacular. In fact, if you do go anywhere, I'll make sure you disappear. Don't do that. There'll be no-one to watch the show. It's a good point. So, stick around, because later in the show... John meets Radio 1 movie critic James King. Aha! ...to find the best all-in-one home cinema systems. You do want a little taster of the cinema in your own front room. And Otis goes to Barcelona to meet an extraordinary robot called Reamby. Can I take him home? Welcome back. Now, I want to talk to you about home cinema systems. With Blu-ray now offering the highest quality surround sound and 1080p HD pictures to anyone with a player, the potential for enjoying cinema quality movies in the home is now greater than ever. And these days you can buy some pretty darn good all-in-one home cinema kits that give you a complete surround sound speaker system and a Blu-ray player all-in-one box, hence the all-in-one bit. And the good news is you don't need to take out a second mortgage in order to buy a pretty decent entry-level setup. And to prove the point, unsurprisingly, I set about a bit of testing. James, hello. Lovely to see you. I'd invited along James King, Radio 1's resident movie expert. It's kind of like a teen movie version of Fight Club. Together, we were going to rate home entertainment systems from Panasonic, Samsung and Sony. So what are you hoping for in these? Um, well, I'm, I'm listening, actually, because ah. I'm more interested in the sound. People often forget about that and focus so much on the picture quality, I think. You do want a little taster of the cinema in your own front room. First, we had to unpack our three systems and set them up. They all come with 5.1 surround sound. Does it say uh, front and back, left and right? Uh, and this is front. Is Using five speakers That's placed round you with a subwoofer for bass, they create a 360-degree audio experience with you in the middle. It's so lightweight, isn't it? Mm, and that's, that's what all your vocals are going yeah. through, isn't it? Both the Panasonic and Sony come with a microphone to aid speaker calibration. The noise is picked up by the mic and fed to the player, which then works out how loud each speaker needs to be for the optimum experience. This is amazing. To compare the home cinema systems properly, James and I settled down to watch the recent Blu-ray release of Transformers Revenge of the Fallen on each player. We started with the Panasonic SA-BT200. As with all of our systems, it claims a 1,000 watts of audio power and has full 1080p video output. First, we assessed picture quality. I think it's pretty sharp. I think that's a definite tick for the picture. Thumbs up. Yes, thumbs up. Next, we moved on to the all-important sound. The helicopters, that you know, you can hear them. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yes, yeah. I, I mean, it's, it's perhaps not the most subtle thing in the world, but you're not going to get the, the subtleties of a cinema set up for £400. 
The dialogue there seems a bit cardboardy to me. It has not much of it, but it seems almost slightly too muffled, a bit woolly. Yeah, I think there could be um, a little bit more life in it, couldn't there? But not bad. Ooh. Overall, I'm quite yes. impressed. Yes, I mean, it's exceeded my expectations. Yeah, absolutely, mine yeah. too. Overall, then, the Panasonic impressed us with clear pictures and good, if not subtle, sound. Next, it was the Samsung okay. HT BD 1250R. I don't think the picture quality is as good as previously with the Panasonic. It certainly doesn't feel as involving. It's hard to see why, necessarily. The involving is a really good way of describing it, I think. For it, I, I'm not going, wow, looking at it yet. No. I'm, look, I'm going, this is very good, and there's a good bit here, I think. You can see, I mean, in both you can really see, like, the grooves on his fingers, you know, his fingerprints, but I think with the Panasonic you could see that clearer. The whole picture's actually slightly noisy, as though it's actually inventing extra pixels of its own. Mm. I'm not that convinced by the sound in this. I'm going to demonstrate. Is that all right? OK. I think there's an awful lot of sound from the front, so left, centre, right, yep. bit from the subwoofer. This is a surround system. It's not a front system. So yep. what about the stuff at the back? What about hmm. our friends here, rear left? I think it's certainly doing something, it's isn't it? Doing, it's doing yes. something. If you're getting the helicopters, you are getting, you're the getting helicopters, good, get the bullets. The bullets, yes. but there's just not that general feeling of space, is there? No, you're actually the looking at something going on some way in front of you, by So I large. think it's a bit top-heavy, mm. this. And the dialogue as well, which was actually not that great in the previous one, was it? Not, not that great on the Panasonic either. No. no but it is not good on this. I think I it's think. worse on this. The Samsung was a letdown with noisy pictures and front heavy sound. Finally, we looked at the Sony BDV E300. So let's have the old fingertip test when he looks at the fly. I think the fly looks really good in this, actually. Mm. And that's, uh, you know, I think mean, that's pretty good. Yep. Overall, I'd say it's uh, it's an impressive picture, but we haven't talked about sound yet, have we? No. I mean, it's certainly directional. I mean, you certainly yeah. do get um, in the, the old helicopter. It's definitely up with the best there. But I think that it's probably it's probably just um, a bit too full on. It's like when there's a lot of things going on in the scene, there are lots of different sound effects. It all just merges into this sort of wall of sound. Yes. yes. Phil Spector would probably love, yes, but we're not quite, we're not quite the same. And the voice seems to be getting lost in it, people's voices. What's going on? I mean, I'm, I'm genuinely disappointed and surprised by that in all three machines, yeah. that the dialogue coming out of its own individual speaker, they've all got centre speakers just for the dialogue, mm. but really, I mean, it's, it's, it's muddy, isn't it? I mean, they're, they're, it doesn't yeah, really seem to have any punch. On the Sony, it seems to be actually getting really quite lost. I presume you could actually go into the settings and tweak that. I think in all of them, but we're yeah. doing them standard yeah. settings, you know, for, yeah. for fairness, and none have really impressed with the dialogue, I'm No, ne neither the type of it nor the volume. No. Nor the way it's mixed in. And so did G ratings, and the Samsung gets just two Gs. We found the picture quality to be lacking and the sound muddier than the others. For the Sony, it's three Gs. It's a solidly designed system and the sound is decent enough, although it's hard to distinguish individual sound effects. But the pictures are great, with excellent colours. Finally, it's four Gs for the Panasonic. It gave a brilliant picture, and while the sound won't satisfy hi-fi purists, it was good for the money. Gadget Show Live, our live exhibition, takes place this April at the NEC in Birmingham. Now, the original four days of the show are totally sold out, but if you've been slow getting tickets, all is not lost, because the exhibition will now open to the public for a special preview afternoon on the 7th of April. For details, go to our website, www.5.tv slash gadget show, and click on the tab marked Gadget Show Live. See you there. Susan, I've got a great gadget for you. Have you ever wanted to watch television while you're in the kitchen doing oh, yeah. your chopping? I've got a telly in the kitchen. No, no, I don't, I don't mean that. All right, well, you, you're sat in bed and you yeah. want to watch telly. I've got one in the bedroom as well. OK, look, you're walking down the high street, mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. And you want to wear a really cool hat at the same time. Oh, yeah, I've, I've got, got loads a of cool hats. For that. All right, you've won the lottery, all right? Just go with me on this one. You've won the lottery, you're yeah. a space tourist, you've landed on the moon, all right? You're in a little oxygen bubble, the oh. sun's beating down, so you need a hat, and you still want to watch telly. Have you got a gadget for that? No, you haven't, but I have. It's called the TV hat. Oh. Hey, look at that, it's brilliant, isn't it? <laughs> Isn't yeah, it genius? These little really velcro good. straps. I'm just going to turn on my video and um, enable you to um, to get rid of the glare. Okay, you can plug in an MP3, an iPhone, an iPod, whatever you you want. There's a lens here, all right, yeah. which increases the size of the screen. I've got no glare. It's nice and dark. I've got a nice vivid picture. 
but you look like an it's, idiot. And I look cool. You don't look what cool. You're trying to say. No, you look ridiculous. A dead snazzy. Now it's time for a gadget that mm. could be a gadget of the future. I like this thing. Otis has been on his travels again. He's been to Barcelona and he's found a gadget that's not only very large, but also very clever. I'm actually watching... You look ridiculous. I'm watching the Otis film here. Have I'm, a look. Look. I'm not going in there. No, We're come on. No. Since the dawn of the robotic age, roboteers have dreamed of building a humanoid robot that could help out with everyday tasks. A sort of real-life C-3PO. And while modern robots are capable of many amazing things, until recently, very few have come close to having the versatility or sheer engineering brilliance to take on such a demanding role. Up until now. Meet Reem B, one of the world's most advanced robots, and he's been built to help. Hello. Hello. Unusually, he's not Japanese, American, or even British. He's been made by PAL Technology from the United Arab Emirates, although most of the research was done here at their European headquarters in Barcelona. Underneath Reem B's composite skin is an aluminium skeleton and 41 motors, each dedicated to manipulating a particular joint, giving him as human-like movement as possible. Uh, he can walk at 1.5 kilometres an hour and perform complex manoeuvres. For example, Reem B is capable of sitting down in a chair. Have a look. OK, this might be easy for you and me, but for a robot built to walk on two legs, this is really, really difficult. Which is why Reem B needs two gyros, two computers, and a load of sensors to get his bum on that chair. Hey, nice one, Reem B. High five. They're working on giving him the ability to do that, but more importantly, they're also working on giving Reem B the capability to walk up and down stairs, which of course would be incredible. Here he goes, up, again, oh, bit, yeah, I know how you feel, mate. Reem B can be controlled directly through a gaming remote, or he can be pre-programmed by computer, allowing him to follow commands such as go from point A to point B. However, in our unpredictable world, this isn't as simple as it sounds. One of the problems faced by developers of robots for use in the home is the constantly changing environment. Doors aren't always closed, furniture can move, and people and pets are a constant hazard. To cope with obstacles, the robot uses a combination of its stereoscopic vision, lasers and ultrasonic sensors to understand and map its environment. This allows it to spot potential problems and even take evasive action. OK, so he's sensed the chair in his way and is manoeuvring to avoid it. I'm impressed. Other key skills include the ability to carry heavy objects... Thank you very much. ..and the ability to recognise and respond to faces. Hello. Sadly for now, Reem B is just a prototype, but amazingly, his makers claim a production version isn't too far away. So it's not goodbye, nor is it adios more. See you later. He's so cool. Can I take him home? <laughs> Just this one. I'll look after him, I promise. Reem B. He's cool. Yeah, he is, isn't he? Robot revolution is near. You saw it here first. I've got a couple of robots. You're going to love these. Oh. Take it over there. We've got a little assault course made up. Uh, they're from America. Switch them on. They're called Raboni Eye robots. Yeah. Get this. They've got Ooh. four processors on board yeah. and 16 sensors. They work off these controllers and they're very responsive, actually. Look at that. Isn't it brilliant? You can bash me. You can shoot me with an infrared cannon like this. <laughs> Uh, you're on the charging zone now, so your power oh, my power's is going, going up. up to 60. You can also go online, plug your controller into your computer and play a virtual version of Raboni Eye against on other the screen. people. Multiplayer. Fantastic. It's genius. OK, so the big question is, Jason, when can I get my hands on one? After me. Oh. Yeah. Time for another short break now, but after that... Our gadget magic challenge continues. <laughs> That's my card! As we stun the world with our technological sleights of hand. Look at that! Trust me, if you like Blaine, Copperfield, Siegfried and Roy, you're going to be blown away by Bradbury and Perry. There you have it. <laughs> Welcome back. Now it's time to return to this week's magic challenge. 
Yeah, Jason and I had been given the task of performing the very best magic trick that we could using tech, which would then be judged by a magic expert. So obviously neither of us have been to Hogwarts. Um, I'm no Jedi Master. Susie's completely cack-handed when it comes to just about anything. Uh, and so we decided to do what we do best, to bring on the hardcore gadge. On our magical quest, we'd already tried out a load of gadgety magic tricks. But now we'd resolved to come up with our own tricks. And I'd realised my best chance of success lay outside. Street magic. Magic out here on the cobbles. After all, if you get it wrong on the street, you can just run away. So I'd come to Covent Garden, the spiritual home of street performance, to get some help from Dynamo, one of the UK's top street magicians. Known as the hip-hop magician, Dynamo is a master of close-up magic who's even levitated Lindsay Lohan. Dynamo. Yes. How's it going, man? Do you know what you want to perform yet? Not yet. It's going to be a card trick, right? Yeah, why not? I've got some ideas. What I'm interested to see is just how you interact with people. As he demonstrated a trick, I watched to pick up some tips. <laughs> that's my card, and that's your card, right? That's amazing. So Man, I've got some work to do right here. Yeah. But what I lacked in Dynamo's sleight of hand skills, I would hopefully make up for in clever tech. I'm liking this. So you think that you've done one trick, and then suddenly you switch it around and you've done another one. I, I'm getting some ideas. Let's go and get a cup of tea. Let's do it. I'm going to take you through some ideas that I've been working on. While Jason was scheming, I'd come up with a cunning plan too. In order for me to win this challenge, not only do I need to have fantastic technology, but I think it has to be in a controlled environment. I need some theatre and some drama, a little bit of mystery. I'm talking about a magic stage show, and I've come to the right place, and I think I found the right person to help me. Oh, oh. come in. I'd come to Simon Drake's House of Magic, housed in a secret London location and home to one of the UK's most innovative stage magicians. Simon Drake has been wowing and confusing audiences for years, so I was hoping that he was just the man to give me some advice on my stage tricks. Right, obviously, Simon, I want to use gadgets and technology for my show. I think a lot of very clever new technology that comes out can have the appearance of being magical because you have no idea how it's done. And if you use it in a context of a performance, then it could easily be used in magic. Do you think I'll be able to do it? I'm sure you can do it. <gasps> right. Back on the street, my idea for a tech-assisted card trick was coming together. I go up to someone on the street and I ask them to pick a card, if you grab it. I'm just holding it there and I've got this whole notion of, like, energy and chi. What I'm actually doing, dude, is I'm showing that image to someone on a building over there with this. Wow. Check that bad boy. This is one of the longest zoomable telephoto lenses you can get, with a focal length of up to 800 millimetres, ideal for a bit of street surveillance. But the trick wouldn't finish there. I'd then prove my psychic ability by identifying the card from a mixed-up selection. If I get you to warm it up, I can use thermal imaging to decipher Ooh. that card in amongst the pile of colder cards. Um, what do you reckon? I like the way you're thinking. Yeah? And I'd found just the tool. This highly accurate thermal imaging camera renders infrared radiation as visible light to display hot and cold. All I needed now was a final reveal. I don't know what it is yet, but it involves a big version of your card for the big reveal, for the switch around that you talked about. So are you going to surprise them? Yes. The big nice surprise, one. yeah? What do, what do you think? I think Susie needs to be worried. Susie, yeah. we're coming for you, yeah? Well, we'd see about that as I'd got hold of some very sneaky tech for my stage show. The Pulse Smart Pen can store what it writes down thanks to a built-in infrared camera. This can detect barely visible microdots in the accompanying paper and transfer the information to a computer. I figured it lent itself to a devious mind-reading trick which Simon and I had begun to conjure up. Mm -hmm. You draw a picture. Yes. Don't show it to me. Assistant comes and takes the pen. By that time... The picture should be on here. I need performance here. You have to perform. I'm going to go into my psychic trance. The plan was to then use this wireless USB AV kit to transfer the image to an off-stage screen. The vision is coming to me. It's I'm... coming to... It's... it's a house. Perfect. I'd also find another way I could magically receive information on stage. The audio spotlight is a speaker which generates a narrow and highly directional beam of sound using precisely controlled ultrasonic waves. It would hopefully mean that I could hear something that the audience couldn't. Nine, ten, 
Couldn't get that. 41, I think. Brilliant. I know. We could, we could do, like, lottery numbers. Let's do it. All my trick needed now was some sneaky comms. This induction loop generates an electromagnetic field to send audio wirelessly to a covert earpiece, keeping me in touch with a team of accomplices. But would all my tech work? I'm going to rub one of them. I'm not going to tell you which one I'm rubbing, and you've got to tell me which has got the highest thermal image. It's the one on this side. Yes, it is! That's brilliant! How easy is it to actually see the card? It is quite difficult, but, you know, if you get it right, the spectre is open once hit him. I'm loving you, man. I'm loving your work, man. <gasps> Fascinating. Do you know what I learned from that? The fact that technology has been a part of magic forever. I, do you know what I learned? It's all about the performance. You know, the energy of the performer to beguile the person they're trying to do the trick on. Completely. And also, the simplicity of the trick is also key, isn't it? Yeah. So we've both got our tricks, yeah. but how would we perform on the night? Yeah, would we be welcomed with open arms into the magic circle? Or would we prove ourselves to be talentless muggles? I've got to tell you, you're going to find out in the climax of this week's challenge. Don't miss it. It's fantastic. It certainly is. But right now, we want to perform a little trick for you guys at home. Yeah, we are going to fill one of your houses with more gadgets than you thought could ever fit in it. Yes, it's time for this week's competition. You tell them, Suze. <laughs> in fact, don't. Let, let me tell them. Uh, this week, we're giving away 150 separate gadgets. Enough tech to give you a complete, total life home makeover. Yeah, enough tech for a home makeover and a separate pile of stuff to play with as well. Right, so if you want to win, I suggest you relax. Look carefully into the screen. Not over it, not to the side, OK? Directly into my eyes. Do you reckon I've got them, Suze? Yeah, OK. Here comes the list. Suze? Woo! Susie? Woo! Wow. You could win this week's home cinema winner, a Panasonic SABT200, a 50-inch plasma TV, a 40-inch LCD TV, a 32-inch LCD TV, a Blu-ray player and 30 Blu-ray movies. An Xbox 360, a year's free subscription to Xbox Live, a PS3, a PSP Go, a Paramount gaming chair and a pile of games for all the consoles. A Wi-Fi detector T-shirt, a Q-Waves wireless USB AV kit, a Quick Pitch SS, a dirt surfer and an iJoy horse riding exercise machine. Our top five home security gadgets, our top five USB gadgets, our top five RC flying toys, and our top five scooters. A Bosch fridge freezer, a Panasonic washing machine, an AEG tumble dryer, a Magimix jug kettle. A LiveScribe Pulse Smart Pen, a Panasonic Compact Digital Camera, a Nikon D90 Digital SLR Camera, a high-end gaming PC, a MacBook Pro, and a Canon PicSmart Printer. A TomTom Go Live Sat-Nav, a B&W Zeppelin Mini iPod Dock, a Wii, a Wii Fit and a DSi. A Watson Energy Monitor, an IntelliPanel, a Wolf Eye Shark Torch, a Blur Power Kite, a Hydra Coach Water Bottle. An Altec Landing InMotion Max iPod Dock, an iPhone and a 5.1 surround sound speaker system. An LG watch phone, an iPod Touch, an Arcos 5, a Burton Ordex iPod jacket, a Panasonic high def camcorder, and a Sanyo Xacti waterproof camcorder. A Flip Video Ultra HD, a Rovio mobile webcam, a bulletproof USB memory stick, an Oral-B electric toothbrush, and a Slingbox Pro. A Surefire E1 backup torch, a Cannondale Trail SL3, and a Brompton folding bike, a Roberts EcoLogic 2 dab radio, and a pair of Salomon Cosmic walking boots. A Gorilla Pod, a Berghaus Bioflex rucksack, a Mag a Mix food processor, a Power 8 workshop, a Philips juicer, a pair of Berghaus walking boots, a Yogi Gatekeeper Pico, a Griffin Bluetooth headset, a Water Blaster XLR water cannon, a Super Soaker and a Roby Pro Super Disc. A Cobb Barbecue, an Aladdin Challenger flask, a pair of Skull Candy TI headphones, a Lingo voice translator and an Apple TV. A Breville toaster, a copy of Windows 7, a copy of FX Home Special Effects software, a Mine Lab Explorer metal detector and a Dyson Ball vacuum cleaner. A D-Link Wi-Fi router, an Amazon Kindle e-reader and a Samsung NC10 netbook. All that plus four tickets to Gadget Show Live at the NEC in Birmingham this April and a limo to take you all the way from your front door to the show and back again. It's a prize fund worth in excess of 25 grand. And to win with the chance of winning the lot, you'll need to know the answer to this question. Which of the following is a society for magicians? A. Magic Circle, B. Magic Flute or C. Magic Roundabout? To enter call 0904 1616 or text A, B or C to 6355. Or send your answer, name and contact telephone number on the back of a postcard or a sealed envelope to Gadget Show 5, PO Box 46556, London N1 0WW. 
Calls cost £1.50 from a BT landline. Calls from other networks may vary and from mobiles will cost considerably more. Text cost £1.50 plus one message at standard network rate. For rules, go to 5.tv slash win. Lines close at midday on Monday the 8th of March and three days later for postal entries. Of course, we'll show you the question again at the end of the show. Good luck. Time for the last break in the show now, but after that, our magic challenge reaches its quite magical climax. There you have it. It's one of the most exciting and amazing ends to any challenge we've ever attempted, and you really don't want to miss it. Nice bye, bye! bye. Welcome back. It's time for the main event, the climax of this week's Magic Challenge. Yeah, we'd both been set the task of coming up with a barnstormingly brilliant magic trick using gadgets. Yes, our efforts were going to be judged by a magic expert. Now, I'd gone down the street magic route. I was going to do my trick in, in front of a bunch of unsuspecting passers-by. Yeah, whereas I was being all psychic and wanted to go down the more traditional theatre route, convincing an audience that I had a gift. Oh, you've definitely got the gift. Oh, thank you. Without a shadow of a doubt. So, the day of our final performances had arrived. I was up first. Yeah, sit back and prepare to be magicalised. I arrived at Covent Garden, ready to make my transformation to fully-fledged street magician. My trick would be to predict a card using a team of accomplices with covert comms, my ultra-zoom lens and that thermal imaging camera. So, does that all sound good? Yeah, yeah awesome. awesome. OK, let's do some street magic. While I started rehearsing my spiel, round the corner, the final piece of my magic jigsaw was falling into place. My super-fast printer. The Osage Color Wave 600 uses resin balls rather than ink, converted into a gel, which is then jetted and crystallised onto paper. I was hoping it would print quick enough to get a card image and a punter's name onto a mobile billboard for a magic finale. Meanwhile, our final thermal imaging tests weren't proving particularly reassuring. I'd need to identify the card from a row of six, but in the cold air, they were rapidly losing heat. No. Fourth from the left. Yeah. But with the zoom lens now in position behind an overlooking balcony, I hooked up my cover earpiece and grabbed some punters for a full run-through. Why don't you pick out... What's your name, boy? Simon. Simon. What's your name? Mick. Say again? Mick. 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 Nice to meet you, Mick. However, things didn't quite go to plan. I need to try and feel the energy coming off the card. The zoom lens worked a treat. Ace of hearts. Ace of hearts. But due to traffic noise, the printing team misheard and printed both the wrong card and the wrong name, meaning the final reveal was a bit underwhelming. It's not. Oh, man, what am I like? All that effort and all I could do is get it printed out with Simon's name on it. What, what a complete and utter success. Though my punters were too polite to admit it, that had gone pretty badly wrong. Do you know what? That was absolutely rubbish. <laughs> I got the guy's name wrong and the wrong card. It couldn't have been worse. This could be a huge catastrophe for me. And now my practice time had run out too, as our expert judge had arrived. Magician Paul Zenon is a master of the dark arts, who's seen it all on stage and on the street. He wouldn't be easy to fool. I mean, I like to think I've seen it all magic-wise, but you never know. And, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm quite looking forward to see something I, I haven't seen before, and, and if they can fool me, you know, all the better. But it's, you know, it's a tough challenge. Paul had no idea of my setup, so we needed this to work first time to have any chance of success. OK, here we go. All right, dude, do you want to come and have a go? Yeah. Nice to meet you. What's your name? Ben. Ben. Right then, Ben, uh, I'm going to do a trick for you. It's a car trick, all right? This time, it was stage one complete. Right then, Ben. We had our name. Ben, uh, you've got the cards there. Try and pick yourself, uh, let's say, six cards. Pick six, but don't show them to me. Six. Are you ready? Give me the others. Keep me six. Next up, identifying the card. All right. Now, Ben, choose one card. Have you got one of you? Mm -hmm. Okay, pick it out, don't show me it. I just need to try and get the energy from this card, okay? This is all about energy. Eight of clubs. Eight of clubs. Eight of clubs. I'd heard it, though obviously I wasn't letting on. It's not working. Okay, 
I just hope my team had got it too as they began printing the giant card. Let me just put these down here. Now the next stage was for me to prove I could identify the card face down. Again, I'm going to try and get that energy flowing so I can imprint the value of the card on my brain by heating it up for thermal imaging. Grab the card. Again, be careful I don't see it. And put it in your hand like this, all right? Yeah. All right. OK, let's hold it. We can just feel those vibes. <laughs> I need to feel the energy, the chi of the card. But would the card retain its heat long enough? And would the camera get a clear enough view without being spotted? Put it in the pack, mix them around. Go, go, go. Come on, Ben, move it. Sammy, are you ready? Have you done it? Yeah. Have you done it? OK. Second from the left. Second from the left. Right, let's have a look. <sighs> Feeling. I'm feeling some NRJ. I'm feeling some NRJ. Is, does that feel like your card? This one, are you joking me? Seriously. Is that your card? Yeah. How about that card, Ben? Is that your card? What the hell? <laughs> oh, my God! Is that, who is that? Who is that woman? <laughs> is that your card? Is that yeah, your... That's you, did we do it? <laughs> we did yeah. we make it work? Yes. Nice High five! Oh, Benny no. boy! Oh, Ben's well, friend! Man. I think we should snog now! <laughs> I love you! Amazingly, me and my team had done it. My punters were genuinely impressed. But how about the expert? That was cool. You pulled it off. Really? Was, yeah, no, seriously, I'm not just saying that. That was because the main thing about it is got to be entertaining. So it doesn't matter how clever the trick is or the gadgetry or how complicated, but that was fun. I, I just feel we sorry actually. for those other 51 cyclists waiting round the back yeah, at that, the end there. That's yeah? the problem, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Hey! It worked. I loved your trip. Thank you. It guys worked so well. It did. I couldn't believe it. Ben couldn't believe and it. Ben, hey, he was bewildered. Ben, he was bemused. He, was, he had wasn't no he? idea. So Jace had set the benchmark very high. Yep. Was the challenge already in the bag for Jace? Not if I'd got anything <laughs> to do with it. With my performance approaching, I was busy preparing my two psychic tricks, using a smart pen to mind read a secret drawing and a directional audio to deduce a series of numbers. 21. But the pen and the wireless link to the screen at the back had both mysteriously stopped working. Oh. And with the audience arriving and my judge just minutes away, I was beginning to panic. Even all my crew looked desperately worried, so... <laughs> we just about had time to change the pen, and then it was showtime. I genuinely don't think I can pull this off. And I've never, ever said that on the show before. I just had to pray my tech wouldn't let me down. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting Psychic Susie. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to my demonstration of paranormal psychic vision. Using my magic ball, I randomly selected a punter from the audience. What's your name, sir? It's Keith. Keith? Do we know each other? Have we ever met before? No. Nope. Do you only know me as Susie Perry off the telly? I do. OK. Then I asked him to draw any picture he liked. Something very simple, but draw it very large on the piece of paper. Are you done, Keith? I am. Take the piece of paper off the board, fold it in half, please, and pop it under your bum. Sit on it. So far, so good. No one had spotted anything untoward about the taped-up pen. Now Katya was sneaking that pen off stage. We had a matter of seconds to get that image onto the laptop, and this time, the new pen had worked. But with the wireless link to the TV holder... Focus very clearly on what you drew. And would anyone spot it? I want you to really think very clearly. Something's coming to me. What's that? A circle involved. Mm-hmm. There was. Oh, yes. I've got it. I've got it. There was a circle, a couple of legs <laughs> and a couple of arms. Could you come on the stage, please, Keith, with your piece of paper? Open the piece of paper just here next to the board for me. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. <laughs> this was going brilliantly. Now, could I pull off my final trick? It's been a difficult day today and, unfortunately, I lost my head. <laughs> <laughs> After being blindfolded, I asked my audience member to think of three numbers and to write them down. Yep, done. Now take your seat and a round of applause for Keith, please, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and then Psychic Susie took over. And now using my psychic powers, the first number, I'm thinking unlucky for some 13. <laughs> it worked! Yeah. Because of 
course, what the audience couldn't hear was this. Eight. Is it number eight? Thanks to my precisely positioned audio spotlight and my accomplice hidden in the rafters. Just one more number to get, but that volume level had to be just right. Oh. I've got it. I've got it. I think it's 30... 37? No, not 37. I couldn't quite pick it up, but too loud and it'd give the game away. It's 30. Visualise, visualise. It's 30. It's... It's 30! 30. 3-0! Zero. <laughs> Thank you very much. Could you take my blindfold off? Ooh, that was a tricky one. Thank you very much. I've done it, and my audience hadn't spotted a thing. Thank you all for coming. Just remember, be careful what you're thinking. You never know who's reading your mind. But had I fooled the expert? <laughs> so your verdict then, please. How did I do? Well, you're a natural, aren't you? Oh. <laughs> no, seriously, I'm not just saying it, but that, that was brilliant. You know, I watched the rest of the audience and they were totally fooled. That was, you're going to get burnt as a witch if you're not careful. <laughs> that, was, that was seriously great. You know, both tricks were fantastic. The second one, I'm not even sure. No, that's what I'm doing. Really? Yeah, yeah, but Yuri Geller's made a 40-year career out of less than that. So, seriously, top marks on that. Thank you very much. Brilliant. Well done. Utterly convincing, I thought. I love the fact that during rehearsal it was a little bit pants, but then the performance <laughs> element came out and you really pulled it out of the bag at the end. You say during rehearsal, I never even got a rehearsal because <laughs> the tech didn't arrive till but the audience was coming in. You saw how surprised I was. Forget <laughs> the guy I was seeing the trick to. I was amazed that it worked. Exactly, but the question still remains, who actually won the challenge? Well, only one man can answer that, and it's not me. It's brilliant magician and your judge, Mr Paul Zenon. <laughs> Hey! How, how did you do that, Paul? I don't know how I did that. <laughs> oh, seriously, you both did really well, though, because you're used to presenting, but to kind of be thinking about the tricks as well. And particularly, Jason had a, a real hassle there because he had to improvise and fill in while they did the trick. Uh, and Susie obviously had to learn the script and, and lose her head at the same time <laughs> and be blindfolded. As regards who won, it's not just about the entertainment and showmanship. Obviously, it's about the trick itself. Yeah. And the answer to who won is in the cards. Oh. So I'm going to look for a card in here that will represent the winner. I'm going to go. It's a male card. It's got a J. Oh. However, it's got Susie's oh. name. Oh. 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 Excellent. Oh. Well done, Susie. <laughs> Uh, the, the reason is really because I quite honestly didn't know exactly how you did that second trick there. Because uh, I was thinking it must be kind of either someone behind the chair whispering or you've got a hidden earpiece and it wasn't either. So, <gasps> so we uh, managed yeah. to fool the great Paul Zenon. No, that's, that's a real achievement. Thank you. Oh, very much. Uh, psychic Susie, what am I thinking right now? That's all we've got time for this week. We'll see you next time. Isn't that astonishing? Hey, hey. <laughs> see you next time. <laughs> She's good. See you. Next time on The Gadget Show. <laughs> We're playing a massive game of treasure hunt with John as the treasure. Look, have you seen this guy? Yeah. Is he a fugitive? Yep, our Mr B has hidden himself away and Susie and Otis go head to head. All right, fellas, let's go. To try and track him down using cutting edge tech. And there it is. There it is. Gotcha, Bentley. Jason goes for a ride on the world's most advanced Formula oh. One driving simulator. Go, 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 go. And Olympic sprinting hero Linford Christie meets up with John to test the most technological trainers you can buy. That's next week, but right now, before the credits roll, remember to enter this week's incredible competition. Yes, we're giving away all 150 of the gadgets you see flying around before your eyes right now. Wow. And as well as that, we're throwing in four tickets to this year's Gadget Show live exhibition at the NEC in Birmingham. And as the show is now sold out, this is just about the only way to get your hands on tickets. It's an incredible prize fund, altogether worth over £25,000. And to win the chance of winning, you'll need to know the answer to this question. Which of the following is a society for magicians? A. Magic Circle, B. Magic Flute, or C. Magic Roundabout? To enter, call 0904 161655 or text A, B or C to 63555 or send your answer, name and contact telephone number on the back of a postcard or a sealed envelope to Gadget Show 5, PO Box 46556, London N10 WW. Calls cost £1.50 from a BT landline. Calls from other networks may vary and from mobiles will cost considerably more. Text cost £1.50 plus one message at standard network rate. For rules, go to 5.tv slash win. Lines close at midday on Monday the 8th of March and three days later for postal entries. Goodbye and good luck.